Hey, what's up, guys? Um, it's Mandi Burmi from AC Driving School, and with me I have uh, Carlos, and we are in um, Edmonton, Alberta. Carlos is a um, certified Class Five uh, driving instructor in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, and I teach in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. So in this video, we are driving to Millwood, Carlos. Yes, we are. Okay, ready to go. So, so maybe, maybe what we can do, uh, Mandi. You know, now that you're backing up, we can talk about uh, the things you need to do to be safe when you back up. What okay. Do you think, okay. Yeah, for sure. So one of the things, uh, uh, one of the mistakes people make is they use their mirrors to back up. In a car, uh, you shouldn't use your mirrors. You should use, uh, you should turn your head and look behind you. There's too many blind spots. Mirrors are only made to look straight back. You don't see the sides, nothing else. When you back up. In a parking lot, you have traffic coming from a lot of different directions, left, right, behind you, and you have traffic, vehicle uh, traffic, and pedestrian traffic. So you have to be very careful. Remember, mirrors are only meant to look behind you while you're driving. They're not meant for you when you're backing up. So make sure you turn your head, look behind you. And okay. uh, one more question. Do I yes. put any signal on, Carlos? No, you don't have to put your signal on when you back up. Okay. And parking lots are just like a two-way street, so I have to stay on the right-hand side. Is that is that correct? correct. Yes. That Unless is correct. I see a yes. sign indicating yes. it's a one-way. Yes, and you yeah. do have to indicate, and um, and the recommended speed in a parking lot is 15 kilometers per hour. 15. One five. Okay. Yes, 15. And. Um, So we are just going to exit this parking lot. Yes, we're gonna go straight into the exit. Uh, we're gonna make a full stop. There is a stop sign. Normally you don't find any stop signs at the exit, parking lot exit, but you do have to stop. Whether you have a stop sign, a physical stop sign or not, uh, you will have to make a complete stop whether there's traffic or not before you exit. Yes, and that this is street is, the it's a one-way street, this, so I go in the closest lane. That is correct, because it's a one-way, you would be uh, taking the first available lane to you, um, or the closest lane yes. to you. Yes. Okay, so now it looks clear. And this one, now are we going straight? Yes, we are going straight. Uh, you know what? Actually, we can probably make a left turn. Left we can, turn. Yeah, okay. we can stay in this lane. We can, okay. we can take this uh, road. Uh, yes, so yes. if you guys look at the overhead signs from this lane, I can go straight or left. And from the left lane, we can only turn left. That is correct, yes. Now, one thing we need to remember is that driving is not black and white. There is times when we have to change things a little bit, right? For example, we recommend to signal 30 meters before the intersection. But what if you have an exit of a parking lot or another, uh, maybe an alley before, you know, closer than 30 meters to the corner? Then you should be waiting, you should wait until you pass that exit before you put your signal on because you can confuse other drivers. Yes. By signaling, you know, and and, uh, and confusing the other driver. You know, they may be thinking you're turning right, right where they are, and they may pull in front of you. So we have to be careful. It's not always the same. So it's not, everything is not black and white. There's some things that you, you can sort of uh, adjust a little bit. Okay. It's important to be flexible in the way we, we think when we drive. Yes. And speed limit on this street is a maximum 60 kilometers. Yes. And I'm doing about 55. And that is good. Yeah, uh, we recommend that uh, you don't do more than five below the speed limit. Um, so we... Yeah, you wanna have a little bit room to play with. That is correct. You know, a little bit of room for error, right? I yes. mean, uh, that way you don't take your chances going over the speed limit. Because in reality, even going one kilometer over the speed limit is breaking the law. Even though people think that you're allowed to go over the speed limit, you're actually not allowed to go over the speed limit. 
the police can pull you over even going one kilometer over the speed limit. They could. Um, so yeah, don't think you're allowed to exceed the speed limit at any time. You're not. So on the right hand side, I see a yellow sign indicating the right lane is going to end. Good observation. And that's one thing that is very important when you drive is observation. Look at the signs. Now, not all the signs are going to apply to you at the moment, but some will. So it's important to understand the signs and, and apply, you know, the... Um, apply what the sign says, you know, if, if it applies to you at the moment. Um, but uh, it's important to be aware of all the signs on the road and understand what they do, what they mean, and yes. how to apply them uh, properly. Now, as, as, we, as we gain more experience, we tend to sort of learn to separate the signs that really apply to us at the moment or not as long, we need to be aware of them but we know which ones we need to be concerned about at the moment and the ones that we're not so at the beginning it's overwhelming um, there's so many signs on the road people don't know which ones to look at and which ones apply to them as part of the the process of learning so it does take a little bit of time to get used to that but you have to know the meaning of all the signs on the road Carlos, can we talk about a little bit about the difference between the basic and the advanced road test? Okay, now the uh, you're talking about the actual exam, the road test. Yes. Um, one of them is uh, the length of the uh, exam. The uh, the length of the exam for the um, for the basic road test is about 30 minutes altogether, from the moment you leave the office and the time you come back into the office. The um, the advanced road test is um, 60 minutes from the moment you leave the office and the time you come back. So this is about half an hour difference between the two. Uh, the advanced road test is, um, is about a half an hour, 30 minutes longer. Uh, also, there's a few more things you have to do in in, um, in your advanced road test. Are we going basic. straight or we are turning? Yeah, we're just uh, going straight right now. Okay. And um, what are the um, what's the other difference? So there's time. So advance is half an hour. Yes. Oh, sorry, basic is half an hour. Advance is approximately forty five minutes. Or an hour. An hour. An hour. Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are some of the other um, um, you know differences? Well, in um, in your advanced road test, you have to know how to merge onto a highway. Okay. So high speed highway, and how to exit properly and safely. Uh, in the basic road test, you don't have to do that. It's not part of the road test. Also, in your advanced road test, you do um, all the possible parkings you may encounter in the city, like um, perpendicular parking or stall parking, angle parking, um, parallel park, and hill parking, up and downhill park. You also be doing um, some of the same things that you do in, in the basic road test, but again, you know, plus a few other things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you guys are going for your uh, basic or advanced road test, um, we can help you guys out. Give us a call or send us a text message. So now I see a red light, so I'm slowing down, looking for stop line, and uh, we're going to do a complete stop before the stop line. So, so it's a good idea when you're stopping is to check your rear view mirror. Okay, okay as you're braking. Um, also, checking your rear view mirror is something that you should be doing consistently. Uh, every eight seconds or so, you should be glancing on your speed, uh, I'm sorry, on your rear view mirror. Now, talking about glancing, and that's basically exactly what you need to do. 
whenever you take your eyes off the road, it shouldn't be for more than one second. So an example, um, if I need to check my mirror, it's just a quick glance you know, on the mirror, one second long, and that's about as long as you want to take your eyes off the road. Same thing when you check your speed. So you never want to stare longer than a second at anything outside the road in front of you. Okay. And also important since we are stopped at a red light is to keep an eye on the on the light so be ready to go when the light turns green. Yes. You take a quick look left, center, right before you take off. Um, before you, you, you start moving again. And but you need to be alert. It's important to be efficient. Uh, driving is not only about being safe and of course mainly being safe. You know uh, but we also need to be efficient. We need to learn to be efficient when we drive. Uh, that means, you know, um, when you need to move, move. Don't just sit there longer than you have to. Don't become distracted. Um, be ready to go. And uh, that helps the traffic flow. A lot of the traffic jams on the road are not caused by the traffic signs and the traffic lights. are caused by drivers being inefficient when they drive. Yes. So in uh, in a couple of blocks from now we'll be turning right. So it would be a good idea to, um, to Lane switch change. lanes. Yes, to the right lane. Now, what can you tell me about uh, switching lanes? So I signal. Well, the first thing you check. should do actually before you even signal, you should check your mirror. Okay. Because you need to check for a gap in traffic first. You may not be able to change lanes. So once you see that you have a gap where you can change lanes to, then you put your signal on. Right. Are and we la- turning on this And the or? last thing, no. no. And the last thing you do is you shoulder check. Okay. Okay. So, so mirror check, signal, signal and shoulder, shoulder check. check. Correct. Now, and what about the speed? Uh, do I slow down or should I speed up or no, maintain my speed? That's a good question. It's very, it's critical that you maintain your speed when you're changing lanes. Do not increase your speed. Do not slow down. We are going to turn right at this corner here. Okay. Um. Yes, uh, maintain your speed. Maintain your speed when you uh, when you are uh, changing lanes. When you're checking. Yes. yes. When you're changing lanes, because um, you know otherwise other vehicles will catch up to you very quickly. And you won't be able to change lanes, and that's a very common mistake by beginner drivers. Uh, beginner drivers tend to. Uh, you know, they are afraid of changing lanes. It's a maneuver that you have to do it, and it's understandable. But, they, you know, they don't understand why they're having such a hard time changing lanes. It's because they're slow, you know, they are slowing down when they're changing lanes. And once they slow down, the other traffic catches up to them, and they, you know, suddenly their lane is blocked. They cannot change lanes anymore. But they don't, they, they really don't realize that the problem is that they are slowing down too much. And that's what's causing uh, all the trouble for them to change lanes. Okay. And do you want me to stay in this lane? We're going to be turning right at the next uh, traffic light coming up. Okay. Signal, shoulder check, light is green and there's no pedestrian crossing so that means we are good to go, staying close to the curb. Only if your um, if your right lane is open, right? If, yes. there's, if there's an obstruction on the right lane within half a block or 50 meters to the corner, uh, you are allowed to take the next available lane. Okay. Okay, without entering the uh, the right lane. Now, if, if there's an obstruction further than half a block or 50 meters, then you should turn to the right lane, then you will be changing lanes to the left. Okay. 
and um, you have to follow up proper lane change procedures. Of course, signal, always. Anytime, yeah, anytime you do a lane change, it's the same. And remember, what defines a lane of traffic is not the lines painted on the road. It's the space that you have to drive in. So whether you see lines painted on the road or not, there is lanes of traffic. And that's something that takes a little bit getting used to uh, judging your space, where your lane should be. Something you need to practice. Yes.